The bomb calorimetry is a little bit different than uh, the coffee cup calorimetry, the constant pressure uh, calorimetry we were looking at before. And here you're going to use a, what would be, it's called a bomb, um, not, maybe not like the, the kind of bomb you're thinking, um, but you basically, the, it's constant volume. So the volume's not going to change, but the, um, and you'll, so you'll build up a whole bunch of pressure. So you have this little chamber in here, and that's where you put your sample, and you can ignite it, you can get the reaction to go. And then what happens is um, you measure the temperature change of what's going on outside. So you have some water out outside here, you're going to measure the temperature change going on there, and then you can relate that to um, the reaction, you know, because you can't measure the heat of a reaction directly. You can only uh, measure something in the surroundings. And so you're going to measure, um, so, but so you can use all that information. This is kind of like a derived calculation, so a derived um, equation. So the Q of the reaction is um, negative C cal times delta T. So this C cal is the calorimeter constant. It depends on, um, it's specific for this calorimeter, and delta T is what you're going to measure. And then you can relate that to the Q of the reaction. You can express that Q, that heat of the reaction, in uh, per gram or per mole, or whatever you want to do. Um, so let's look at one of these one of these questions here. So you have a 0.586 gram sample of lactic acid. You burn it in a bomb calorimeter, and they give you the heat capacity, and that's the heat capacity of the um, the bomb calorimeter. So that's your C cal, that's your calorimeter constant. And they tell you that temperature increases from this to this. So obviously this is releasing this is releasing some heat. Can you calculate the heat of the combustion um, per gram and per mole? So again, this is different than what we're doing in lab, so you're not going to want to use this equation when we're, when we're doing lab. Q reaction C cal times that. This is when you have a bomb calorimeter, uh, and we're, we're not really deriving this equation. It's, it goes through a little bit more in depth in the book, but um, we could just use it right now. So our delta T is C cal. So C cal, the calorimeter constant is um, 4.812, right? that's a specific heat. Sorry, the heat capacity of the calorimeter, kilojoules per degree C, and delta T is your final minus initial. So final 24.95 minus 23.10, you get your delta T to be 1.85 degree C. So my Q of the reaction is going to be negative 4.812 kilojoules per degree C times 1.85 degrees C, and your Q of the reaction then is, um, I'm sorry, that, then you want to do this per mole or per gram. All right, so I got negative 8.902, negative 8.902, and then if you want to do this per gram, they tell us we have a 0.586 five gram sample, so this is kilojoules per gram, and that ends up being negative 15.2 kilojoules per gram. And then if you wanted to do this per mole, you would have to convert those grams, that 0.5865 grams of lactic acid. You have to find the molar mass of the lactic acid. Remember how to do that? You have six hydrogens, you have three oxygens, you have three carbons. When you add all that up, it's about that's about 90 grams. And then gram grams get your moles. You have like 0 0.0061. So, oops, sorry, 6517. 6517 moles. And then you can take that um, if you want Q per mole, you have negative 8.902 divided by the 0 0.006517. That's kilojoules per mole, and that's pretty common for the heat of a reaction. You'll see that in kilojoules per mole, um, which makes sense. This is negative 1370 kilojoules per mole. All right, so that's a bomb calorimeter, um, a little bit different than the constant pressure calorimeter that, that we will be using.